Rebecca? I believe in God, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Very much. As the king of pop, Michael Jackson's life had always been under a scanner, linking him to multiple controversies over the years. People were quick to judge, and any rumor regarding him would easily find their way online with no verifiable source, be it his professional side or personal. No aspect of his life was spared. But amidst all the scandals ever chronicled, probably the most controversial story that generated curiosity globally was his conversion to Islam before his death. All over the world, everyone had an opinion. Muslims seemed more likely to believe evidence of his conversion, while others strongly defied those theories. The internet was flooded with information of all sorts, and nobody knew what to believe as the truth or pass off as a rumor. With the scandal gaining momentum, it became even harder to differentiate whether this was a case of someone thwarting reality with a brain game or just pure gossip. People were eager for the truth. The internet was inundated with hundreds and thousands of questions. Had he really converted to Islam? If yes, then why were people arguing against his acceptance? Where was all or any of the proof? Did he convert? If not, then where was the proof that he did not convert? Neither did anybody have a proper answer, nor was there a release of any official statement. Just a bunch of conjugated facts strung together to create a sensational headline. Let's review the facts presented for his conversion. Did Michael Jackson convert to Islam? Initially, everyone was led to believe that he had indeed converted. Articles detailing how he found inner peace and how his Muslim brother had deeply influenced him convinced people of his conversion. But soon after, as more facts emerged, his conversion became questionable. The once solidly claimed facts started falling apart as they became tethered to weakly cited sources. With some profound fact checking, reality took a different turn altogether. Why were people arguing against his acceptance? There were no official statements released by any parties involved. People started questioning the authenticity of the facts. One Islamic press, the Pan Arab News Channel at Al Arabiya, declared that Michael did not convert to Islam at any given time. This claim was never refuted by any official Islamic press, not even the Final Call, which was the official newspaper of the Nation of Islam. Michael once stayed at the Royal Palace in Bahrain, where he was hosted by the Prince Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa. There was heavy media coverage. Given the high profiles of both the personalities and the common claim was that he had accepted Islam during that time. Pictures of his stay in Bahrain were made available online and they often depicted his whereabouts and activities. One of the pictures that caught people's attention was of Jackson donning an abaya, which in Islam is a woman's dress. People were quick to point out that he had really converted to Islam. He would never have violated the Prophet of Islam's basic rule of a man being forbidden to wear anything that makes him resemble a woman. Where was the proof? The million dollar question. When the curious fans began searching for answers, they were provided with several proofs. Change of name. It was rumored that Michael's new Muslim name was Mikail. The claim could not be substantiated as no official records have been changed or updated. Only links were of articles of blogs that could not be verified. He swore allegiance to the Quran. The New York Post was one of the press teams that released this story. They had picked this news from another tabloid, The Sun, which is notoriously famous for fabricating news. They falsely claimed that after accepting Islam and changing his name, Michael Jackson swore allegiance to the Quran. It was utterly irrational, as there is no concept to swearing allegiance to the Quran in Islam, as allegiance is towards Allah alone. The conversion was under the guidance of an Imam and some friends who graced the auspicious occasion. The question, who was the Imam? Michael was a world famous star. Even if the conversion was not led by a named Imam, there should have been at least one mentionable name.
Also claimed was the presence of some celebrity Muslim reverts, like David Warnsby and Yusuf Islam, who later on vehemently denied any such gathering to have taken place. Did a Michael Jackson convert then? With no concrete evidence and in light of the facts that had been used as a tool to defend his conversion, hypothetically all pointed toward it being a baseless assumption. The rest, Allah knows best. Then, where is the proof that he didn't convert? Michael Jackson was born a Jehovah Witness. He lived with his brothers, friends and associates, many of who had converted to Islam. Jermaine Jackson, Michael's elder brother, had confirmed that even though Michael had read some Islamic books he had brought him from Medina, Michael had not embraced the religion. Landel McMillan, Michael's lawyer and close ally, also expressed the same sentiments over his conversion. A lot of rumors were fueled when a series of nasheeds, Islamic songs, such as Waiting for the Call, Islam in My Veins, and Give Thanks to Allah, etc., flooded the internet and were allegedly credited to Michael. While the sound did have a lot of resemblance to Michael's, the original artist who had authored and recorded those songs released their statement taking credit. Jermaine and Marlon Jackson, brothers of Michael, repeatedly stated in a series of interviews that despite of Michael showing a keen interest in Islam and reading religious text, Michael did not take any steps towards the actual conversion. It remains unclear why some people spread a rumor or what they stand to gain from it. Allah knows best.